guys, Charles here. Let's see if we can do a 2021 FRQ number two. And this is set two, by the way. Uh, all right. The economy is currently in short run equilibrium with a recessionary output gap of 600 billion. Uh, they're not asking us to draw that, but let's just draw it. Make sure we recognize we've got long run aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply aggregate demand price level on the vertical, real GDP on the horizontal. And then we're just going to show a recession. What we know is that when we have a recessionary output gap, aggregate demand is to the left, right, of full employment. Uh, that's not a gap right there, is that W, let's call it W1. This would be WF right here. Full employment is right under that long run aggregate supply curve. Here we can see we moved into recessionary. Price levels have gone down, right? Price levels have gone down. Output has gone down. We're definitely in a recession. That is our output gap. To close that recession, we need 600 billion increase of GDP. All right, uh, A, draw a single correctly labeled graph of the short run, long run, Phillips curve, sorry about that. Label the initial short run equilibrium point X. So, well, let's do, a, you know what? I'm gonna do it up, let's see if I can go back here. I'm gonna do it right here. We should recognize again that aggregate demand and aggregate supply in your Phillips curves are very closely related. This is the long run Phillips curve, vertical. And our short run Phillips curve is just downward sloping. So short run Phillips curve, uh, inflation on the vertical, unemployment on the horizontal, easy enough. Now they want us to show our equilibrium, our short run equilibrium as X. Recognize that here's full employment for, on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve. If we go straight across, we recognize that that's full employment right there on the Phillips curve. We can see we moved the aggregate demand curve has shifted to the left. Anytime aggregate demand decreases, it's what we call a movement down the short run Phillips curve. So we're simply, when aggregate demand shifts to the left, we're simply moving down the curve. And if we had to, we could draw that straight across and recognize that X is right there down the curve, easy enough. All right, B, suppose the government implements fiscal policy in order to achieve full employment output and the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. Okay, calculate the minimum change in government spending required to increase aggregate demand by the output gap. So they want to shift, fiscal policy wants to shift aggregate demand back. That means government spending either needs to increase or taxes need to go down. That's expansionary fiscal policy, right? So in this situation, they give us your MPC. If your NPC is 0.75, that means your MPS has to be 0.25 because these two added together will always give you one. And obviously 0.25 and 0.75 equals one. So we know what our MPS is. The formula, uh, there's two different formulas. I'm on I'm like a simple guy, right? I'm using the one over the MPS to let me know what my multiplier is. So one over 0.25. 0.25 goes into 1 four times. My multiplier is 4. Now, the understanding here is the government doesn't have to spend the whole $600 billion, right? They will spend a certain amount, and it will be multiplied by the magic multiplier, and that will increase our GDP. So let's work it backwards. We need 600 of real GDP increase, right? We know our multiplier is 4. So what does government spending have to be times four to give a 600 billion increase? And I think this would be 150 here. 150 billion times four would give us 600 real GDP increases. I hope you can see that. Uh, lots, of, lots of questions on the MPC, MPS, but they're fairly simple and they tend to be all tested in the same way. So once you do about 10 of them, that's right, I said 10 then you can uh, feel pretty confident about them. All right. Suppose instead the government wants to change taxes rather than government. So now they want to do taxes instead of government spending. 
Calculate the minimum change in taxes required to increase aggregate demand by the amount. Show your work. Now, simple thing here is that your tax, this is your government spending multiplier right there. Government spending multiplier is four. But we also have what we call a tax multiplier. The simplest thing for you to know is that your tax multiplier is always one less than your government spending multiplier. So the simple thing is to understand that your tax multiplier is three. We need 600 billion of real GDP. What does taxes need to go down? Remember, we're trying to be expansionary. We want to push aggregate demand back to full employment. So what do taxes need to be to get us back to 600 billion? What, what times three? Obviously 200, right? times three equals 600 billion of real GDP. We could also know the formula for your tax multiplier. It's your MPC divided by your MPS. That's the formula if you were to need it. Uh, we know our MPC is 0.75. We know our MPS is 0.25. Remember, we figured that out early on. Obviously, that gives us three, which is our tax multiplier. I'm a simple guy. I'm always just going to know. You're always going to figure out your government spending multiplier, and then you're just simply going to reverse it around and know that it's one less. I don't know if you're reversing it, but anyway, you know it's one less. All right. Number C, assume instead the government takes no policy actions to close the gap. Explain how the economy will adjust in the long run. So this is what we call that classical view, right? No policy actions means no fiscal and no monetary policies. So there's no fixing it with monetary or fiscal policy. We're just thinking of the classical view. In essence, hands off government, what happens? So let's just draw it out here. It's easier to draw and make sense of it and talk about it and explain it. Here we are again with the same scenario we have above. We got this recessionary gap. Price level on the vertical, real GDP on the horizontal. Here we are with our gap here. We want to get back to full employment. Um, there is no fiscal, no monetary policy. Well, what we understand here is that price levels are going down. Specifically, input prices are falling. They're going down. Input prices. So all the goods and materials that, uh, because price level in a recession are falling, all the prices for businesses, their input prices are falling. We also know that wages are going down. Right? Because wouldn't you, if you're, if you're in a recession and you've lost your job, would you accept lower wages to go back to work? Absolutely, you would. I mean, I, unless you're living off your parents or whoever. But the understanding in here is we answer these always the same thing. Uh, during a recession, input prices fall, wages go down. We can also add in something that they've only been doing for a couple of years. That's inflationary expectations have decreased. We'll talk more about that when we're talking about um, more Phillips curve stuff, but we don't need to get into that. Just know all of these, I tend to always, for the last few years, have always just used input prices and wages, but I'm trying to build this inflationary expectations into my uh, explanations. Um, we know that inflate, price levels going down, so inflationary ideas are decreasing, or the expectations of inflation are decreasing, uh, because we can see clearly that that price level you know, we know that is falling in a recession. So as inflationary expectations, input prices and wages fall, how does that affect your short run aggregate supply curve? And we should know our short run aggregate supply curve is affected by any business costs. So any cost to business that go down, like these are doing, specifically wages here, right, too. If business costs go down, if wages go down, if input costs go down, right, expectations of price levels are going down. What we know is our short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. So that's RAS1, RAS RAS2, show an arrow. We can see we're moving back to full employment. That's that classical long run view, right? That over with all of these business costs falling, short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right, puts us back at full employment at a lower price level, right? Price level's gone down even further because this economy is self-correcting. That's that classical view. So we would simply say here that the short run, and we write this the same way every time, short run shifts right. 
We go back to full employment at a lower price level. All right. And I think that's exactly as soon as it's closing the output gap. See, we closed that output gap. We went back to full employment. Um, and prices, everything, wages went down. Easy enough. I think we got that. Uh, all right, my friends, take care, be safe, and see you soon.